There are three main driving forces that has helped me shape my life and my career. And they are freedom, joy, and growth. And to pursue them, I've used the concept of fight or flow. And I see fight or flow as two intertwining energies, pretty much like yin and yang. When guided by intuition, they propel me forwards uh, in line with my driving forces. When I was seven years old, back in Sweden, where I'm originally from and grew up, I watched my first Bruce Lee film, and it was Way of the Dragon. And I have never, at that point, been so much in awe and completely blown away by someone or something. I didn't really understand why at that point, because I was so young, but it really sparked me, or sparked a fire in me. So I asked my dad, like, what do I need to do to become more like Bruce Lee? And he said, that, well, first of all, you need to work on your physicality. So I suggest you do some press-ups, you do some chin-ups, and some sit-ups every day. And so I did. In fact, I did it twice a day, <laughs> every morning and every night. At least that's how I remember it. But as you get older, you start doubting your memories. Like, did I really do that? But, <laughs> but what I do know is that I was the only eight-year-old amongst my peers that had a six-pack, so I must have done something. Actually, he also told me if I want to be able to punch and kick like Bruce Lee, then I, I better study his films and try and imitate what he's doing. So I was, those films were on repeat, particularly the fight scenes, and I, I tried to practice on my own and kind of understand the movement. And I also ordered uh, all of Bruce Lee's JKD books and tried to learn from them, which was pretty difficult because most things was like working with a partner, but uh, <laughs> I did my best of trying to pick out bits and bobs. But it was this consistent training um, that laid down the groundwork um, of uh, my sense of discipline and also my physical stature that I've been relying upon until today. And through this process, I found and cultivated my fight energy um, to achieve things that I desired. I also asked my dad, after a few years, if he could find me a, a Kung Fu class, because now I wanted to like, learn it for real. And the only place he could find that was local enough was, um, was a bit confusing, because it was called North Shaolin Kung Fu, but it was Japanese. And I really want to do something Chinese, because I'm half Chinese, Bruce Lee's Chinese, so I want to do something like that. It was created by this uh, Japanese guy who had done multiple disciplines of martial arts that was mainly uh, Japanese. And I w didn't love it. It was something about the movement felt quite rigid, uh, and it was lacking fluidity. To me, it looked more like karate than kung fu, or the kung fu I had seen up to that point. I started to question whether martial arts was for me, or whether there was just, just a, a romanticized idea that I had about Bruce Lee and so on. So I lasted about 10 months, and unfortunately, um, my fight f and burning fire for martial arts was dampened and almost gone at that point. But then, that allowed me to kind of flow into a different direction, I, and that was dance. And it was completely unexpected, because up until that point, I had no interest in dance. Uh, I'd watched my sister do ballet and didn't find it particularly interesting at all. But then she started taking hip-hop classes. And again, something sparked in me. Like, I just loved the way it looked and how much fun they had. It brought me joy watching it. I used to watch my sister and her teacher in class, in rehearsals, and then doing performances. One day, I mean, my dad was standing outside the studio and, and watching in, uh, and they found me suddenly like, imitating them doing the, the robot. And they were like, oh, we should put them in class. <laughs> so they did. So I, I went in uh, for my first class, and I absolutely hated it. It was the worst thing I ever done. I just couldn't stand being so exposed in front of the mirror. I just felt so vulnerable. So when I, we, we went back in the car with my dad and my sister, the first thing I said, I was like, I'll never do that again. And they were shocked. So they were like, what were you talking about? You were the best one in there. And I was like, oh, was I? OK. And then I went back, and then I never looked back again. But something about dance that I found was actually more uh, alike to Bruce Lee's movement in Kung Fu, because it had, it had energy, it had fluidity, it, had, it was dynamic, 
uh, and it was very physical. And I found, because I had a natural talent for dance, I realized um, I could easily use my fight energy to, to excel in that genre. And also, I found that uh, I could mix it quite easily with the flow energy, that the flow came to me. Because of that, I started doing gigs quite early, like small dance shows, but also at age 14, so three years later, I started doing it professionally. I got my first job in a music school and uh, was full time. And then flow just carried on and I was doing, going from walking from show to show for the next five years, still back in Sweden. But before I actually carry on with that story there, I, I want to fast forward about 10 years and I, uh, I was reading a book about Bruce Lee's philosophies and principles and it was the book, The Warrior Within. And I had an epiphany because I realized at that point that I had pretty much lived my life and shaped my career in line with what Bruce Lee was talking about in that book. And it was, it just, it just gave me like a sense of relief and the confirmation that I had done the right thing of listening to my intuition, even though I had to make some really like difficult and scary decisions, but I did it anyway because it felt right. I didn't know at that point whether that was just accidental that I had lived my life that way. But I also realized that Bruce Lee did incorporate all of, or many of his uh, philosophy and principles into his films. And I was watching on repeat since I was a kid. So I probably absorbed lots of the teachings and, uh, and cultivated it subconsciously. What I've learned is to when to fight and when to flow. And, um, and that guided by my intuition and my driving forces. And it was kind of strange, because growing up, um, I felt like Bruce was a bit of a guide to me. But it could also be because I, I lost my dad when I was 11 and my mum when I was 13. So Bruce felt like a father figure uh, to me and a mentor, uh, to the point that even when I had to make some difficult decisions, I would, in my head, like, ask myself what I think Bruce Lee would have done in this situation. But then going back where it was, um, in the flow, going from show to show, and I was about, it was between, between I was 14 and 19 years old. But the thing is, I was juggling school at the same time. Juggling school, work and training, um, and school became more and more of a challenge. Because I was doing at least two nights a week uh, in the theatre, and also on the weekends, and in the daytime I was doing school, and then fitting in training, which was dance classes and, and gym at that point, uh, in the other evening. So I was, I was pretty packed schedule. As time went on, I went into the, like, the Swedish version uh, or equivalent of A-levels. Uh, it started to become really tricky because I kind of got away with not doing the homework and still get by. But when I got to that level, you kind of have to do your homework to keep up. And it was a time when I had three different shows I was working on. And school was feeling... I was fighting still for school, but it was, it was more of a struggle. And I realized I had to let something go. And to everyone's surprise, I actually let go of school. I quit school. And that's not something you do in Sweden uh, at that point. And I don't, to this day, I don't know anyone that has quit school. And my friends only know one person, that's me. <laughs> so that was a crazy thing for, uh, it seemed like for everyone else. But for, to me, it made sense. And for a few different reasons. And the first one was like, I, did, I was doing a course that was preparing me for university and, uh, and it wasn't on my agenda to go there. Secondly, I loved dance so much. So I knew my passion, I knew my talent, I knew what I wanted to do. And thirdly, because I didn't have any parents, I also needed to work. The main reason I did make the decision was actually intuition. Like I felt it was the right thing. But quite shortly after that, I... Uh, I started feeling a little bit complacent even in my job and it was great, I was working a lot, but I was in fairness doing a lot of ensemble roles or smaller roles at that point and I felt like I'd, I wasn't having a much, as much growth as I'd like at that point. And I realized also that my colleagues that I was working with, they were all a bit older, they all have gone to a performing arts college and I started getting interested in doing that too because if I'm doing the same job as them now, what can I become if I do the same and I get trained properly? But at the same time, I was worried about uh, losing my unique 
kind of style because I came from a hip hop background and most of them had come from a ballet and jazz. So they had a particular style, I had a different style. I wanted to pres preserve that. By audition to for a couple of schools, I got into a, one in Sweden and one in London called the Erdang Academy. In the end, I decided to jump ship and go to London, um, let go of everything, all the safety I had of like family or my sister, jobs that I had, uh, friends, uh, rented out the house that my, um, me and my sister, we inherited, uh, broke, up my, broke up my girlfriend at the time as well. Uh, so everything, just put it behind and moved to London uh, and to do the education. Huge risk, and it was a massive leap of faith. But intuition again said, you've got to do it. You've got to do something different and follow your passion. In terms of martial arts, uh, from then on, I've only managed to really dip in and out at different time periods because s the schedule as a performer is quite unpredictable. Um, and, but during Erd <coughs> Erdang, when I was there for three years, I, I managed to, or I found actually Wing Chun, and I actually loved it. And again, I found a spark for martial arts. And also they confirmed that I probably just was doing the wrong martial arts back then because now I was like, oh yeah, this is what I was looking for and I wish I found that when I was like 11. Other than that, I've, I went to Wudang Mountain uh, in China and I trained, uh, trained in Wudang Tai Chi and Gong Fu and that was a kind of a movement that I feel like has influenced how I move even as a dancer these days. Otherwise, I've also done some bit of Thai boxing and then eventually I found Jeet Kune Do. So I finally got to train <laughs> JKD that I tried to pick out from books. Absolutely loved it. But thanks to all this training and over the years, I managed to land uh, a lead role as a, a martial arts master in a, in a dance show. So I got to combine my martial arts with dance. But after graduating from Erdang, uh, I must say I've, I've had a fantastic career. I've loved every bit of it. Um, it's taken me around the world. It's in different dance shows and musicals and films and the Olympics in China. So I feel like my career has been like in the flow, but I've been using my fight energy to improve my skills and also adding more strings to my bow. So apart from the martial arts, I am also a rock climber um, and I did uh, a lot of gymnastics and, and so on. And at one point, I thought my dream job was to work with a company called Cirque du Soleil. And they are one of the biggest uh, production companies in the world. And they do amazing shows in Vegas and in touring internationally. Uh, and I thought it doesn't get more prestigious than that. So when, when the day came when I got an invitation to audition for them, it was like a two-day grueling uh, audition. Uh, and, uh, but it was a lot of fun. And at the end of that, they offered me a job. Uh, in one of the shows. It started in two weeks, so I had to leave in two weeks uh, and also it was going to be for three years. But at the same time I just auditioned for another uh, dream job which is Mamma Mia the film, that was going to be filmed on a Greek island, so it's very kind of different kind of things. But I took this opportunity to kind of push Cirque du Soleil back, ask around a little bit for some friends that was doing the show or done other shows and I'm so glad I did because I realized that they were working, were doing about 10 shows a week and I'm used to do, doing five, six, at the max eight, you do it in West End for example, but they were doing 10 uh, performances a week and they also had to come in about five hours before the show and I'm used to about two hours um, because they have to do so much preparation and makeup and so on. So I think they're working close to six hour, uh, 60 hours a week which means that was really violating my uh, highly regarded freedom but also having an individual style was something they tried to strip away because they wanted to mold you into playing your, that character in that particular way they wanted you to. So there was another thing that violated my, my freedom and, and personality. So even though I haven't had an answer from Mamma Mia, I still turned Cirque down uh, and in just hope that Mamma Mia will come through or it would work out and just trust in the flow um, of that decision. And in fact, I actually feel like I dodged a bullet there because um, I feel like I would have been trapped or felt trapped uh, and having to conform um, and also be locked up for three years and not be able to shape my career. But two years later, I got a career changing opportunity to uh, be part of a TV show called the uh, So You Think You Can Dance on BBC. 
uh, and that wouldn't have happened, for example. And here I got an opportunity to be an individual. Uh, I got an amazing opportunity to learn and grow and was given a platform and loads of visibility. And I really got to use my fight energy here and I had to because it was really, really challenging six weeks. But it was great. But also I left the results to the flow because I, I just used my fight energy to just do the best I could uh, and learn as, as much as possible. In the end, I didn't win, but I came second. And there was still enough to give me a, like just a taste of fame, which was new to me. And I, there was aspects of it that I enjoyed, but there was also a lot of it I didn't enjoy. And after I finished the show, I got a the advice to capitalize on this, the following, and I should build a brand, I should be, do logos and merchandise, and uh, be very active on social media, build a website, do a blog, uh, send out newsletters of what we're doing. And it just left me feeling exhausted. Like I felt like I was just fighting, but it was like hard. Uh, and I was losing myself a bit. So I was dancing less and doing more of these kind of soul destroying tasks. And ultimately, I felt no joy. And also felt resp responsibility now to reply to all these like emails and messages and comments to, to all my fans. I realized I was, I was fighting for the wrong thing. And flow has kind of, kind of left me at that point. So I felt trapped, decided to just let it go. And I felt like a weight lifted off my chest and slowly flow started coming back again. I could really now start capitalizing on the hard work I had done on a TV show. And that led to many lead roles in uh, different productions. And I started working with a company a lot called Zunation Dance, Com uh, Dance Company. And a lot of times the roles that I, I got were actually written for me. And out of that, the artistic director for Zoo Nation, uh, Kate Prince. Uh, she recommended me and another cast member, um, Lizzie, to choreograph for Strictly. And that was something I hadn't Im imagined being a possibility because I don't do Latin, I don't do ballroom. But that year they were just introducing hip hop. So they were looking outside their own books of choreographers. It was a scary challenge because I hadn't done anything like it. It was such a high profile show. But I also knew I had to say yes. I had to try it and just face that fear. And six years on now, and I'm still choreographing on it. But just to summarize what I've, I've learned from working with um, the old balancing fight or flow. And for me, it's a focus on my fight. Well, focus my fight energy on improving my skills and adding new skills. But if I feel no joy, or if I can see no joy at the end of the road, it might be time to let go and just switch up. And then just let flow guide my career and, and life on the side. Um, as long as I'm happy and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm having or feeling that joy at the same time. But the signals of boredom, complacency, that might be like the trigger to, you know, apply my fire energy to kind of make some changes and uh, do something else. But also to really listen to my intuition when making important decisions. Uh, and stay true to myself. And in closing, I'd like to invite you to have a think and reflect on when you have used fire to flow in your lives and also recognize where you're at at this moment. Thank you.